This is Mongolian Mindset, and today we're going to be doing another uh, interaction styles by Linda Barron. Today we're going to be dropping the direct uh, communication versus informing. Um, directive in, uh, communication versus informing. Highly recommend you guys pick up uh, Linda Barron's Understanding Yourself and Others. Um, this is the uh, interaction styles. And also pick up the temperament. And we have in other videos, went over some of them, like abstract versus concrete, uh, progression versus outcome, uh, systematic versus interest, pragmatic versus affiliative. So check out those videos. These will help you um, triangulate down on your best fit type. These are the same things that we use in our videos to help other people find their personality types. And today, um, if you find out if someone's direct versus informative, you eliminate eight of the possible personality types that they cannot be based off that alone. Um, Shelly, you got anything you want to say before we get into this? No, let's uh, start. All right, boss. <laughs> so, guys, like we said, this is the series on how to find anyone's personality type. Okay. <laughs> Shelly, you want to take that? All right, so two interaction styles, direct language versus informing styles. Um, all communications that involve getting someone else to do something can be classified along the continuum from very directive to very informative. This dynamic involves the style of communication as well as the words. Ultimately, it comes down to ways that we influence others. So direct people tend to be concise and to the point, and informative people tend to beat around the bush and give you a lot of information you don't need. So the direct types are ESTJ, ESTP, ENTJ, ENFJ, ISTJ, ISTP, INTJ, INFJ, well, and then the informing types, ESFJ, ESFP, ENTP, ENFP, ES, or ISFJ, ISFP, INTP, and INFP. So uh, basically what this means is that um, there's a communication style that everyone uses, no matter who you are. Um, you have a um, higher propensity to do one or the other. Um, direct types are going to be specific, concise, and to the point. And there's a spectrum. There's a spectrum to like the words that you use and how you go about it. It can be very direct or it can be very informing. There's a spectrum, okay? Um, but generally speaking, informal types are going to try to get people to want to do what they're saying, as in um, a direct type is going to just tell you what to do. And then be very upset if you don't do it. Okay. That's the that's the hallmark of the uh, direct types. Like they were like, okay, I told it, like I told this person to do something. They didn't do it. Oh, this stupid motherfucker, like, god damn it. Like I told this dumb motherfucker. Like they they really don't want to have to tell you again. Like they're not gonna like let you take time and digest it and do all that. No, that's not what direct people do. Like, oh my god, I told him this. Like, why am I having to go back and, and tell him this again? You know, um, so that's what it means. It's like some urgency behind it. Um, and uh, obviously you have your direct types, um, direct outcome or direct direct outcome or direct initiating are going to be your ESTJs, ESTP, ENTJ, ENFJ. And then you have the Shelley direct, which is the um, direct responding progression, um, which is ISTJ, ISTP, INTJ, and INFJ. Then you have the very wordy, uh, informative types that's going to be your starters or your get things going uh your esfj esfp entp and enfp and then you have the the responding informative uh outcome types which um um they, they're going to be hiding a lot more but that's the isfj isfp intp and infp okay um so i'll take the next slide here uh direct communication focus on a time and task uh, direct communication is most effective when there's little or no choice uh, about getting certain tasks done or in a crisis. So what I always tell people is direct language is great and all, but the thing is, generally speaking, it's not that great outside of like quick things to do or like when things need to be done in a hurry. Uh, when it comes to like selling things, like selling things or getting people to buy in, informal language is a lot better. Um the nonverbal communication is a, like a sense of urgency. So like when you're dealing with someone who's the direct, a lot of times their nonverbal energy is going to give you like that sense of urgency. 
um, get this shit done now. Um, direct and language give structure, direct, tells, ask, urge. Comfortable telling people what to do, less comfortable giving information and leaving alone. Like I said earlier, when we tell you something as a direct type, we expect you to fucking do it. Okay? If, if you don't fucking do it, we're going to lose our fucking cool. Especially me being direct outcome. Like, I like to bark orders. Shelly, not as much. Um... Because she's direct responding. They don't like to bark orders as much unless they have to. As in for me, it's like more of a natural role for me. Um, being direct outcome. Um tendencies impatient with emerging process. Like, yeah, we like we want you to do that now. Like, <laughs> like now. Like that's why we're telling you this. Do it now. Uh often surprised when people resist being told what to do. Yeah. Um, maybe frustrated by the lack of clear position tend to act certain that they are right and may be seen as bossy. Generally speaking, if someone's very bossy, they're going to be coming from more of a direct style. So if you can tell if someone's bossy, you know they're direct. Um, it's a bit more forceful tone of voice. Obviously, they have a much stronger tone of voice. Uh, more straightforward statements can apply one up, one down. A lot of people don't really notice this, but one up, one down means like I pretty much have power over you. A lot of times you can see direct people um, get informing when they're around people that are in a higher social standing or like let's say for instance if I was talking to um, the CIA boss or something I would take a more of informing style or let's say I'm around Mike Tyson I'm not gonna be telling Mike Tyson what to do Mike Tyson might knock me the fuck out okay because nobody likes to be told what the fuck to do so just take that just understand that um because, like I said, it's like it's, it can be rude. Um, direct language often exhibits, like we said, a one up, one one down. Um, I tell you what to do, and um, I am some ways one up on you. So, um, generally, what we said, um, what you could take from here is, is direct people are pretty easy to tell. The informative people are a lot harder to tell, as you see the different variations of informative type. Generally speaking, when you're dealing with direct people, they are close ended. Statements very close. Um, I have a story. Uh, the story is when I was a kid, I always looked up to my older brother and I would see him on the phone with like girls and he would be able to talk for three, four, five, six hours at a time. Uh, my brother's an ENTP. Um, they're informative type, so they they keep a lot of their communication open so that the um, conversation continues to go. And I'd watch my brother and I was like, man, I'm writing down a script for myself to talk to girls. And when I got on the phone, my conversation ended within four minutes. And now that I look back at it, I realized that's because everything I said was closed ended. So I'd be like, I'd have like a 10 lines of what I was going to say. And then within two to three minutes, I'm like, I'm going to call you back, blah, blah, blah. You know, just because I didn't really understand my own natural communication style was closed statements. So it doesn't leave people open to give information doesn't allow the conversation to flow. Um, that's why I say the informative people are a lot better with girls too. Shelly, you want to go for it? So the last one, direct communication yeah. is explicit, concise, and to the point can be very forceful. They're very easy to understand and follow. There's not a lot of extra information. Just, you know, they say what they say what they mean mean what to say um directing language chooses its own roles in conversations one up one down like you said they direct lead manage instruct command and have aggression and forcefulness so unlike the in informing types direct types can be bossy, as he said, but uh, they leave things, informing types, as Mercer will get into, kind of leave things open-ended for you to guess what they mean mm -hmm. and uh, for you to have a choice in what you do. But direct types can be prone to under-explaining things, so I'm guilty of this. I just expect people to connect the dots and figure out what I'm saying and Frequently, it doesn't happen, so they get frustrated. I get frustrated. Um, they may interrupt to get their point across, and they make close-ended statements. 
So mm-hmm. you aren't less left guessing what they're trying to get across. Yeah. So you know, um, another uh, oh, another thing I was I was going to add. I think direct language could be um, confused with outcome and informative could be confused with <clears throat> progression just because <clears throat> direct people use less less words so yeah. mm-hmm. the uh outcome types tend to think of the big picture but direct types whenever they're trying to be brief and not wanting to go on more time than they have to they can just jump to the the end where informative types can go on a rant that can sound like progression at times yeah. so you just have to be careful that you're listening for whether they're confusing or whether they're easy to understand yeah so. i mean yeah that, that is a a good point that you brought up there um for instance like a lot of times people can confuse informative with progression like if someone goes on a tirade of talking for a while then they'll say oh that guy is um informative but no that's 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 not it um if it's direct it's like very close in the statements you can easily understand what they're saying it's direct um uh, but informative like we're saying we'll get into that so <clears throat> informing language okay so informing communication has a desire to motivate to action by giving information so they're giving you information so that you connect the dots and figure out what the hell they want you to do. It's not like they're telling you, it's not like they're like jacking you against the wall. Like a lot of direct people, I feel like we just like, you know, while it's informing people, like kind of throw it up in the atmosphere. And then like, you have to connect the dots. Like my cousin, um, he's ESFP. I had bought some chicken wings, right? And I'm eating the chicken wings. And he says, man, those chicken wings look good. So he's informing me that he wants a chicken wing, but he doesn't just flat out just come out and tell me. I get mad because I got to take a second to register what the fuck he's saying, okay? Back in the day when I was younger, I, that shit would have went straight out the window. But now that I'm older and I understand these communication styles, I noticed that he wants a fucking chicken wing. So immediately I say, man, why the fuck you didn't just ask for a fucking chicken wing? Because I'm, I'm very direct. Like, just ask for a fucking chicken wing, you'll get one. But don't make me, like, have to, like, play blues clues to find out what the fuck you're saying. Um, you can see I get very uh, animated with this type of stuff. Uh, these communications are most effective when people need to be informed, motivated internally and enrolled in the process. So like I was saying, like in sales, informal language is really going to excel um, because you you are motivating people to action. You're getting them to want to buy in. Um, that's why I will say like to me personally, I think the ENPs, are some of the best salesmen, um, especially because they they know what people want and they can slap that abstract language on there, uh, and then they can get very informative and they can make you want the product, whatever it is. It could be a fucking shit product, but they can sell that bitch to you. Okay, um, nonverbal and extraverbal aspects carry the message of engaging others, uh, wanting others to want to see. Like I was saying, uh, focus goes on motivation. It's a little bit more manipulative. Like straight up, it's more manipulative. Uh, than direct language because they're getting you to want to buy in to want you to do it for it. Like they want you to do it without telling you to do it. It's more manipulative. Uh, gives a lot of information. Goal is getting a buy into the goal or the process. Intent is to invoke, draw forth, inspire, and seek input. Uh, behavior is to inform, inquire, explain, describe, nonverbal, nonverbally, flowing. Like I always say, when you look at informative language, are they talking with more open-ended statements? Okay, if they're using more open-ended statements, they're informative. Um, eliciting, comfortable giving information, and less comfortable telling people what to do. So they're going to give you all this information, or they're going to give you information and allow you to come up with the conclusion. Uh, more patient with emerging process. Like, they're going to be more patient with you taking what they said because they know that you have to connect the dots. Um, also surprised when information is not acted on, uh, can be seen as indecisive, more likely to be seen non-committal, may be offended at being told what to do. Okay. Um, basically they're informative, so they want you to kind of be informative with them as well. You know, um, that's 
you know, they 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 take time to not tell people what to do. You know, maybe they don't want to be told what to do either. Um, can be more tentative, hesitant, not confident tone of voice to invite agreement. Often more subtle statements can apply a like for like egalitarian relating to or believing in the principle that all people are equal and deserve equal rights and opportunities. Relationship yet may seem manipulative and can seem wimpy or self-confident, engaging, flowing, opening, like we said. Um, so what I've noticed from all the typings that I've done is that there's several different types of informing language. So you have the very wordy um, paragraph type informing. You have the what I explained earlier uh, with my cousin, throw it up in the atmosphere and make these people connect the dots. Like he says, oh, that looks good. So I got to now make the connect the dots in my head to know that he wants a chicken wing instead of him just coming out and just saying it. Um, you have the uh, what the fuck did they just say informative. I, a lot of times I get that one. Um, like when you're watching a video from an informative type, you walk away from watching that video like what? the hell did I even watch? And that video was 20 to 30 minutes and I have gained absolutely nothing from it. Um, Shelly, you got any other types of uh, informative language besides those, the wordy, oh, the passive aggressive. The passive aggressive one is also um, very passive. And a lot of times they just don't stand on anything they say. They can give you a lot of information and they don't stand on it. Like stand on it. Like they'll give you work. They'll give you all this information. And then be like, well, what do you want? Bro, you just said all this shit. Stand on it. Stand on what you're saying. Like, you got to stand on something. So they'll give you information and not stand on it as well. Like, that's another type of informative. So you got to be, like I said, the informative ones are a little bit more trickier than direct because direct is just how it is. It's closed-ended. But informative is like, it's very manipulative language. So when you notice someone's being manipulative with their language, most likely they're informing. All right, Shelly, you ready for that? Yeah. Well, I also noticed that there's the uh, INTPs who tend to want to educate with oh, yeah. their talk so they can just go on and on about something like you have no interest in learning, but they just they just can't stop themselves and help themselves from from giving you all the information that they know. So um, informing language communication is implicit, not plainly expressed. It's wordy. They give you a lot of information, descriptive and vague. So you're left guessing. They leave open the possibility of interpretation of meaning or intent to the listener. Annoying, you almost have to decode what they what they want. So you know, sometimes you are supposed to read their minds, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Provide maximum information without taking a stand on it. They uh, allow other or allow listeners to decide their role. They educate, describe, inform, and use ambiguous language. They can be passive aggressive, especially when they get offended. Um, they're unclear with their communication, beat around the bush, and uh, others can misinterpret what they're trying to say because they just can get lost going on a tangent and uh, mm -hmm. leave listener wondering, <laughs> how did we get here? <laughs> um, they stir curiosity influence highlight and uh attacked coyness exp explanatory tendencies so like my esfp daughter decided that she needed she wanted to give my sister-in-law some fun dip so she's like here aunt tabitha i got this fun dip for you and then she proceeds to tell her in in steps how she's supposed to eat this this fun dip like she was retarded. i don't know like she uh I had no clue, you know, and she she's my age, so obviously, but yeah, she just uh, couldn't help herself. She likes to make sure that, I don't know, you have all the information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've noticed that, like, my God, like, if you get the, the ESFJ, ESFP, ENTP, or ENFP, dude, all you got to do is just start a conversation with them, and you will notice that they just go... <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you just sitting there like, when is it my turn to talk? <laughs> like, oh my God, man. It's like, uh, get me out of here because they can't shut their fucking mouth. I remember when we were kids, uh, my mother would actually put my older brother on talking bands. He was the only person out of six kids to be on a fucking talking band. Well, my mom would be like, boy, hush, hush your mouth. 
push your mouth. Okay. Um, <laughs> those uh, <laughs> starter uh, inform types can really be something. Um, so, uh, yeah. yeah, for sure. I know, I know the ESFP just, she, uh, she just wants to talk nonstop here herself. I, it drives me crazy. So, I mean, the, the I, I, INTP can too, but you know, at least he's, it's, he's giving you information rather than just telling yeah, you. I, know, I noticed with them, they kind of got to warm up to you and then they try to educate you, but like, you can interject on them and like there's like a brief pause, but when it's initiating informative, it's like even if you interrupt them, they box you into the corner and you're in and, and then like if you like interject, box back into a corner, interject the box back into a corner. It's like holy shit, you know what? You got it, bro. I you just yeah. keep, keep talking for the next hour. That that's exactly what my ESFP does when we're in public, because she she knows that I won't be as uh demanding in public of her so she she'll just keep talking and like over overpower me <laughs> with yeah. her voice so I, I think that's how my brother wins a lot of our arguments that we've had in the past me and christian always say he just he just out talks us like he doesn't give us any time to talk he doesn't give us like anything he's like Darrr. we say yeah. hey Darrr, Darrr, Darrr. and then he'll try to like use emotional pulls on you and, and then it's like he'll say, "Oh, you're getting upset or or something," and then like you start getting upset because he said it to you, but it mainly comes well, from over talking. Yeah, I think I mean you uh, initiating types though think on your feet a lot faster, so <laughs> I think y'all could uh, you know, beat a introvert in a argument very easily because of that. Yeah, but well, that that I just see it as that that, that initiating informative progression. Oh my God, it's just like you can't you can't hang with them. It's like oh my God, it's just like a dead stop. You're like yo, I give up. I got the white flag here. Like, you gonna let me talk or like can, can we like set like some type of measures or something so that you can't just talk me in the corner? Like you get a minute to talk, I get a minute to talk. You got to do something like that with the motherfuckers if you want to win an argument. Um, but. Yeah, we have our, our references here. We have, like we said, pick up Linda Barron's uh, interaction styles and temperaments. Highly recommend it. Um, we got one more to do, and that'll be it. Um, let's see. Um, I hope you guys understand the differences from direct versus informative. Uh, like we said, you have a natural uh natural way to either go to one of these as your natural language but you also can pick up the other language because obviously like i said in different positions you might be in a different structure or something where you can't be direct because everybody's your boss or you might just be in a situation where if you told that person what to do they might beat you up so um or you might actually work on yourself as a direct person and pick up how to be more informed because that allows people to buy into what you want them to do um it's going that's going to bring your stocks up a lot better in the communication um standard and obviously the more you use that language the more you'll be able to decode what informative people are saying because you do have the the informative types that want you to decode what they're saying and if you're an informative type highly recommend you pick up some of the direct aspects as well because that's going to allow you to get things done faster in a timely effective manner uh, my brother has called me and uh, he's ENTP, and he says, "I'm being clear with this girl, with his his uh, um, daughter's mom." He's, like, "I'm being clear with her." I like, bro, there ain't nothing that ever comes out your mouth clear. What do you mean I'm being clear? And it's like, like, no, 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 no. And he doesn't really understand that you know he's got to be more effective with his communication and not go off on tangents, not tell little stories, not give little side notes, but right explicit to the point. Um, Shelly, got anything? Uh, uh, yeah, I, th I think the ENTPs and the ENFPs are probably the hardest to understand because of the NE. They just go out in left field so often. <laughs> well, it's pretty easy to tell they're informed because they just go on a tangent and then they'll come back and say, the point is, it's like, oh. Yeah, well, yeah, talking to the INTP even, I mean, like, you know, you ask him a direct question about something and then he'll he'll start talking about it 
and then he'll just go off on a side note that is completely irrelevant to the conversation. So it's like, why, why is he telling me this? Where a direct person doesn't do that unless they're prompted, which I noticed in conversations with him, he'll frequently like question what I'm saying because I'm not giving him enough information. So then I'm left having to kind of go around and he's like accusing me of going off on tangents. I'm like, I'm trying to answer your questions. So yeah, they can be. Well, I just pretty... feel like with those motherfuckers with informative types, they can, depending if they're the, the, the a lot of words or whatever, when I forget what the hell I'm going to say by the time they finish. So I got to interject with them because I'm going to forgot what I, what I was going to say. By the by the time they even finish, I'm gonna forgot what I was gonna say, and then if if I if I forget, it's it's done, it's done. So I yeah, just, it's uh, really easy to space off when they're talking too. So I mean, I think direct people are just really easy to follow, and and you can understand the words that are coming out of their mouth. Where informative people are just you know which, uh, going so, on just to, for the sake of talking at but, times. You know, you you watch like a thirty minute video and you walk away like, what the fuck did I watch? I just wasted thirty minutes of my life. Like, what the fuck? They can go with something pretty fucking elementary and you still be like, what the fuck did I watch? Like, god damn, I, I gotta stop doing this. I'm wasting my life. But yeah, we get some some of the people that come on. I think the like the ENTP with a vision that came on. I mean, they can be brilliant and you know give a lot of information that's very useful, but. Anyways. Yeah, so um work on that guys. And uh we hope to see you guys on the next exciting episode.